Okay, so today we have an unusual um, show for the Israel advocacy mu uh, movement because we're not going to be talking about Israel. Those that have been watching the channel for a while know that I let my chops at Speaker's Corner. Um, and Speaker's Corner is a part of London, it's a small part of a park, where you have freedom of speech and people are able to express themselves in whichever way they want, as long as they're not inciting actual violence and causing harm to people. Um, anything goes. And so I went there, it was a great place for me to engage with Muslims, Christians, atheists, communists, socialists, everybody, um, about Israel, Zionism and Judaism. Um, a few days ago on Sunday, there was a horrific terror attack uh, where a friend of ours was, was stabbed. And so if you've been paying attention to the news, if you've been paying attention to their social media, if you've been paying attention to our feed, you probably noticed some of the content around this attack. And so the woman who was attacked is a, she's a, a, a Turkish refugee. She came here. She was an ex, she was Muslim and she converted to Christianity. And so joining me on the channel today to discuss the attack are two regulars at Speaker's Corner. Uh, Steve, who is, uh, I'll allow Steve to introduce himself and explain who he is and why he goes there. Bob, who I'll also allow he's a, to introduce himself and and tell you who he is. But he's a he's a Christian, a very well known Christian in the park, uh, as is Hatun. Um, and there's myself, an Orthodox Jew. Now we may be getting joined by a Muslim friend of mine um, to create more balance to the panel, but we'll be discussing what happened on Sunday in the horrific attack. So I guess, Steve, I'll, I'll pass it over to you to, to give a little bit of context. You were there, you know, happened quite, um, relatively well. And so if you just talk us through um, what happened on Sunday to begin with. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, as you, as you said, Joseph, and well, firstly, I say pleasure, pleasure to be on the panel with you both. A um, lot of respect for, for both of you. Um, I think, you know, we know we, we our starting positions are very different when it comes to theology and, and religion. But I think, you know, the, the three of us are very, very respectful of each other. And I think, you know, we're, we, we all got a lot of time. So thank you for inviting me. So, yeah, as you say, Hatun Tash, um, she's of Turkish origin. She's an ex-Muslim. Um, she converted to Christianity. Um, and then basically fled the UK from um, a rather, rather sort of violent and unpleasant time that she faced in Turkey. Um, she's been attending Speaker's Corner for, I'm not sure precisely how long, but a good few years. I'd say it must be at least five or six years. Um, and I think she was initially inspired by an American guy called Jay Smith. Um, who I think probably kind of sort of helped give her the confidence to sort of get up on a get up on a ladder um, and you know face the barrage that many of us face on a weekly basis at Speaker's Corner. So she's part of DCCI Ministries, which is Defend Christ and Critique Islam, and she's probably one of those people in life that um, could be described as Marmite. People either have a lot of time and respect for her or they really, really detest her. You know, she absolutely does not hold back from sharing her views um, and ultimately defending Christ and from criti critiquing Islam. Um, and as anyone that knows anything about Speaker's Corner in, in the recent years, um, Islam has certainly become a very... Um, heavy presence at the corner. So she, you know, Sunday was, you know, only the last episode of an awful lot of violent attacks that she's had, um, which do seem to have been getting worse over, over, over the last um, year or so. So, you know, she has previously been groped, sexually assaulted, spat on, lots of intimidation and threats. She's been hit, she's been spat. Um, she was actually knocked unconscious um, after one um, assault back in October last year. So what's happened, um, you know, on Sunday is just one of a long episode of violence that the, that the woman's encountered. So basically what happened on, on Sunday was that the weather was absolutely appalling. It was absolutely tipping down with rain um, for, for most of the day. But, you know, us, us, us hard, hard ones were still, still going and sort of sheltering under umbrellas and under trees talking um i'd actually just left um and i 
was on my way home and I had a message from a friend that was at the corner, very short message, literally saying, Hatoon has been stabbed. Um, obviously completely shocked. So I immediately did a U-turn and, and went straight back to this corner as fast as I could. And by the time I got back to the corner, I think there was about seven or eight police vehicles in the corner. Most of it had been taped off with police tape. Um, an ambulance, strangely, was only just arriving um, as, as I returned. And obviously, you know, talking to people that had been there and subsequently looking at videos that I think we're probably going to see some of tonight, um, discovered that, yes, an individual who apparently had been loitering around the corner for much of the afternoon um, in, in a black hood and a black cloak and wearing a blue surgical mask, obviously, <laughs> Um, purportedly for, for COVID reasons, who'd been loitering around all day, suddenly um, launched his attack and tried to stab her. And I think from what we've all seen on video evidence, he had one intention, and that was to slit her throat and murder her, which, you know, even saying those words, it's, it's, it's just such a, a shocking moment. You know, we've seen awful violence, but I don't think, you know, even people that have been going to Speaker's Corner longer than me, and I've been going there 20 years, have said to me, you know, they, they cannot remember ever such an awful, awful attack um, occurring with it within the rounds of the corner. You're on mute. So what so, yeah, I was just gonna, what I'll do now, I'll actually play the attack. So trigger warning, I don't like that expression, but we will play the video now. It is quite graphic. Um, it's just a very a short clip just to give those context that haven't seen what, what happened, to give them context of the actual incident we're talking about. The spirit of Allah and the word of Allah does not worthy of worship. Yeah. No, no, no. What I'm saying is the, the word of Allah, Kalam Allah, uh -huh. Kalam Allah, Quran, Al Quran, the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the spirit, oh, it's, it's going, it's going on, hold on, hold on. What happened? Oh my god, Lord, sister, 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 shit. God, Lord Jesus Christ. <sighs> my Lord. Can someone call an ambulance, please? Somebody call the ambulance, bro. So, I'm just going to pause it there. Um, this is a shortened version of the video. The footage was actually taken by Soko Films, who Bob works closely with, believe may be part of. Uh, so if you want to see the video in its entirety, head over to their YouTube channel where you can watch it. One of the most shocking things, which actually wasn't in there, is after the stabbing, um, which was, you see it in the background, they're actually filming a, a, a dialogue, and in the background they accidentally captured the attack on camera. You can see after the attack, many of the people in the crowd I would I would describe them as Islamists. Um, were were laughing. Uh, it was that they've just witnessed the terror attack, and their reaction, immediate reaction to that attack, was to to laugh. And so you can see the full footage. Now, what happened? We now know with, with the the passage of time that the attacker went for what looks like he went for her her neck or her face. He he caught her face with a knife. And he went to attack her again. I don't know if he caught her arm or if it was blocked, but the, 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 the additional strikes didn't connect. Now, Bob is probably better posed to speak about why that was targeted, but I will play one video, which is actually, ironically, is Hatun reading out a verse for the Quran, which may describe why the attacker struck for the place he stayed, he went for an ex and let me just play that video and then the well we'll have a quick conversation um and uh, around what happened and we've actually just been joined by uh, a dear friend of mine a muslim who will be able be able to elaborate on the the verses in the quran and how they may have been taken out of context by these extremists but i'm now going to play this clip when you make those disbelief strike their neck when you believe so what Hatton has said 
um, I, I believe this was a couple of years earlier, she was reading a passage from the Quran, um, an ayah, which talks about, and, and just uh, my, my friend who's going to join us will maybe be able to give context to the verse, but many jihadists, many extremists go for the neck of those for their, uh, that the, they're looking to inflict terror and fear upon. They go to strike the neck, and it's a passage from the Quran, and Hatun had read it out previously, and then in the near identical spot on Sunday where she was standing a few years ago, an actual terrorist did try to strike her neck and did strike at her. Unfortunately for Fahatan, he only only caught her face. And had had the knife been slightly to the the to the left, I believe it could have been. I mean, this was an attempted murder. The the, the man was trying to kill her, and she was very fortunate to have escaped. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to now bring in a, another. Um, bring one more person into the channel and we can just discuss what we've seen in those videos and just them i'd like to um, welcome you to the to the chat um it's good to have you here because obviously we're talking about the quran um i'm a jew bob's um, a christian and steve's an atheist and so it, it will be good to reflect on that particular verse and then the horrific attack that we just witnessed yeah, that's uh, salam alaikum um, for everything. That's verse uh, number eight, uh, chapter eight, uh, verse twelve. Uh, I don't see the link between striking someone on the streets of London with a knife or with a broken bottle or with a whatever, even uh, even with bare hands, and the verse of the Quran that it, it was uh, a revelation doing a battle, one of the many battles Muslims fought against evil, against people who were coming after them and trying to stop them from, from building their own community. Something that every other religion witnessed towards their history and every nation, every nationhood, even Israel or, or the USA, or we all they all fought for, for a reason. So I'm not here to justify the use of violence. I'm just saying that Simply, I'm waiting for to hear the justification, the full, the full length of the justification that 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 gives someone who read the verse of the Quran. These uh, verses of the Quran are not uh, Confucius quotes. It's not like it's not, there's not like quote cards. You don't just like go and pick the one you like. Uh, it's no, not... uh, and I agree with. And but what I'd like to say, I don't believe any of us today are putting Islam on trial. Where maybe some people would do that at speaker's corner, but tonight we're we're literally talking about Hatun, the motivation behind yeah. the attackers and i believe there is a connection between that verse between Hatton, things hatton had said at speaker's corner in that very same spot and why and now this is just my theory um and why the attacker went and struck for the place that he struck um steve bob, uh, bob i know you've been silent up until this point um you've been at the corner for, for many years now you weren't there on sunday as was that thankfully i wasn't there i had a live stream had i not had a live stream with some peacemakers I would have been at Speaker's Corner. And i just like to add, Hatton is the most despised person by many at the corner. After Hatton, you're probably looking at the, the, myself, Bob, and Steve as being the next on the list. So had any of us been there at the park, it's likely that we too could have been targets of, of that attacker for, for different reasons. But it, it's highly possible that we would have found ourselves caught up in that horrific attack. And so, Bob, yeah, I'll maybe pass it over to you because I know you haven't said much yet. Okay, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Um, so, I mean, I think that the the verse should be read in its fullness. It says, "Remember, thy Lord inspired the angels. Uh, I am with you, and give firmness to the believers. I will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers." Smite ye above their necks and smite all their fingertips off them. Now, I actually will agree with pretty much everyone else that the Islamists who use this to justify um, attacks are probably um, not interpreting it in a classical way because the, the paradigm of Islam is a paradigm of being in power. And so the assumptive, the normative interpretations of the Quran assume that there is a caliphate and assume that there is an Islamic authority. Um, 
And what did you do? Where did you get that when, from? It, I'll finish my point if that's all right, Yasin. Yeah. Um, and in oh, terms of made, sorry, you just made no, I'm going to finish my point if that's all right. I'll finish my point. No, I'm going to I'm going to finish my point. No, I'm still going to finish my point. Thank you. So, in terms of the the, the way to interpret this, um, it, it's more along the lines of what happens in jihad, offensive jihad, when when Muslims are invading other people's lands and seeking to conquer other people's territories. Um, but this particular action to try and murder Hatun that we saw, I think, has more relevance to the Sirat literature and the Hadith literature. Um, Which ones? Which one? Can because, you carry your mic? Still going to finish my point. It doesn't matter how many times you interrupt me, Yasmin. I'm still going to finish my point. It doesn't matter how many times you interrupt me. So, what I'm going to do, just because I want this to be a respectful how many conversation, times you I'm still going to finish my point. Let, let's allow everybody to speak, and everyone will be. You're talking nonsense. I'm still going to finish my point. Let him speak. Let him speak, and then we'll come back to the moment. No one's your dimmy, Yasmin. I'm not your dimmy. Joseph's not your dimmy, so you don't get to dominate me. Listen, you don't get to dominate. I'm not paying Jesus. I'm not paying Jesus. I'm not paying Jesus. Yes. Where does the Quran so, say anyway, we need to be a Muslim? Is it that different? Joseph, when you want me to finish my point, I will do, but I haven't finished my point yet. No, you know, are you telling me to keep quiet, Yasem? No, no, I think you should keep quiet. I think you should keep quiet, and you should allow other people to speak. Because I guarantee, Yasim, if I interrupt you as much as you're interrupting me, you'll be complaining about it. No, no, no. that's just how it I goes was, all the I'm time. I'm asking you to give evidence. It's you weird. Said, I was quiet and listening to Joseph. Like, I was quiet and listening to Steve. I'm asking interrupted you neither of them. And yet here you are, and within minutes of your arrival, yes, you're doing nothing but trying to Sir, dominate and interrupt. You your it claim. does you're not matter how claim. long you keep interrupting. I'm not going to stop until so I finish the point. You, so you can't so all you're doing is just wasting everyone's time, Yasem. Okay. That's okay. all you're doing right now. You're wasting Joseph's so time. I'll, you're wasting so Steve's time. You're wasting you my time. Yeah, you're on. wasting everybody else's time. All you need to do is learn some manners. Where I know your prophet didn't teach you any manners. I know your prophet had no manners. And you're demonstrating that right now by believing that you can just dominate, but you're going to have to control yourself. Mm -hmm. Because as you can see, you are just wasting time. You don't and I'm know me. still you don't going know to finish just, my point. My I'm That's still you going to finish my point. Literally, you are wasting everyone's time right now. Wasting I, everybody's time. Go on, I, I'm sure. I'm, I'm. What I'd say is because I think for the, for the benefit of the viewers, I think the, the audience really wants to hear what everyone has to say. They want to hear the rebuttals. They want to hear the arguments. I think the only way this works is if we allow each other to speak in our entirety. I'm going to be making notes because I'm sure people will say things that I disagree with, and I, I suggest that everyone makes notes and we can we can we can ask the speakers to address those areas of contention. But once they've Put forward their entire argument i think as and then we're not speaking over each other so i'll allow bob to continue um but i think that would be best for everyone thank you very much so it will seem now that i've been speaking for a very long time but i want everyone to remember i've just spent three or four minutes asking yasim to show basic manners and basic politeness um so i, I as i was saying i think that the attack that happened and the attempt to murder um, Hatun actually has more connection to the Sirat literature and the Hadith literature um, in which Muhammad either permitted or called for or sanctioned or excused the murder of other people. And I'm going to give you some names now. So, for example, Asma bin Ma Mawan, mm -hmm. um, Abu Afak, Al Nadir ibn Al Harith. Mm -hmm. Ukba bin Abu Moit. Yeah, he just picked them out. Forgive my, yeah? uh, forgive my um, yeah, he just uh, picked them out. Pronunciation of the names again, um, Yasim. If you could just show some basic manners, very basic ones, the kind of ones that I hope your mother might have taught you so that people can hear the argument that I'm making. Kab ibn al Ashraf, Abu Rafi ibn Abi al Hukaik, Khalid ibn Sufyan. Abu Azza Amir bin Abd Allah al Jamahi. Uh, these were all people that Muhammad had murdered or sanctioned the murder of or excused the murder of. Muayya bin al Mugira, al Harith bin Suayyid al Asan Ansari, Abu Sufyan, 
Banu Kurezi, the Banu Kurezi tribe, uh, hundreds of people. What uh, is the point you are trying to make? Because Abdullah I'm not... ibn Ubay, As al Yusari. Again, Yasim, I'll just have pause and yeah, just teach you again. What is the point you are trying to make? You are um, needing a list of people. You're doing is wasting what is the people's point? time. Pick one of those and, and explain what it is. Because he obviously can't them. pick one of them. Choose and I'm, I'm still not finishing my point. Okay, and one once again, one the name? time is just being wasted. Are you able I, to pick one I, of those I'm not names? going to stop. And it's all that choice. you're doing, Yasim, is demonstrating that you can't control yourself. No, I'm asking And that's you not pick surprising one of because can you pick these one are the fruits of Islam. Are you able and you to demonstrate it well. Like can, I, can, I, can I just interject, guys? And, and now I haven't there even there finished are... my point. What, there, what, what, there are, no, I I'm going to make. interject. I hope Joseph doesn't mind. There are four of us on this panel. This is simply not going to work unless we speak individually, one at a time. Of course, we can challenge and disagree and, and argue about what someone has said. But with four of us on the panel, that simply is not going to work unless we give each other time to speak. We listen and then we respond when the person has finished. Now, I, I don't like it when you when you give specific time limits, but maybe we're going to have to because this isn't working currently. I, I completely agree. And um, what I say, I, I really, really hope we can all just, I mean, I'm reading the comments. Jasm, all the Muslim brothers and sisters are saying, please, brother, allow Bob to speak. And they all hate Bob, trust me. The people who are <laughs> wanting to hear Bob do not like him. We're talking Zabida reactionary. We're talking all the speakers corner heavyweight. Can I, uh, can I, just, say, can I just say something and I will keep quiet? Just give me one minute, please, yeah? No, I'm sorry. Hold on one minute. No, just, I, just one no minute, I'm not just going to. I'm not, not accepting that. Okay, go on, go on. No, no, go on. he doesn't get to talk over me and he doesn't okay, get into my, my point and he doesn't get to interject. I'm sorry. No, not at all. There we go. Right. So, as I was saying, um, I'll, I'll try to finish this list quickly. And sadly, I could have got through this all a lot quicker if Yasim had just managed to control himself. So, Abdullah ibn Ubay, al Yusri ibn Rizm, they were the eight men of Ukil, Rifa'a bin Qais, Abdullah bin Katal, Fatana, Qurabay, Huwarith ibn Nafid, Mikwias ibn Subaba, Sara, Harith uh, ibn Hisham, Subaya ibn Abi Umayya, um, forgive me for slaughtering the Arabic, Al Aswad al Ansi, um, Ikrama ibn Abu Jal, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And there's up to 44 groups or individuals that Muhammad had murdered, sanctioned the murder of or excuse the murder of and many of those were murdered because they insulted Muhammad or they mocked him or they patronized him or they resisted Islam many of them just by words and I think it's actually more because of these examples which sit in the Sirat literature and in the Hadith literature that in these kinds of literature is what inspired the attack against Hatun and I think that Surah 8 verse 12 is being misapplied, to be honest, um, by Islamists um, because it assumes a caliphate and it's talking, I think, in terms of jihad, um, which which is how they see themselves. They see themselves as, as, as carrying out an offensive jihad against the enemies of Islam. And one thing I'm just before, Jassim, if you finish, but before Jassim responds, one thing I'm going to say, we're going to work through a deck. At the moment, we're discussing what actually happened. I've got a section where we discuss why it happened. Um, and so a big part of that will play into these big motivating factors. One of the things I will say as a Jew, and Bob, I'm sure you can relate to this as a Christian, is nothing frustrates me more than when non-Jews take a verse out of the Talmud or the, the Old Testament, or the, the five books of Moses, and they then tell me what my religion or what Jews believe. And so I don't want this stream to, to, to go to turn into one of those speakers corner type debates. What I do think is really important, though, is that we're all able to say why we believe that this particular individual, this scumbag, tried to stab one of our friends. I think that's really, really important that we can say. It. And I think we must be that it's clearly religiously motivated. And so we have to look to 
the Quran. We have to look to the Hadith. We have to look to how they may be interpreting that. And that's why it's a discussion. But I don't think we need to turn it into a speaker's corner brawl. It's not. Um, it should be a respectful conversation. Someone we know was nearly killed a couple of days ago because of these types of conversations. Um, so, yeah. Justin, I'll hand it over to you now because I know that you've got a number of things to say. Firstly, I apologize if I wasted everyone's time. My intention was not to waste anyone's time. My intention was to, to make the most of your time. Because when uh, when Brother Joseph asked me to told me about this this uh, intervention, the first it is on the record. He can he can he can confirm it. The first thing I said, unless the brothers means Bob or anyone else. I, so honestly, I don't know you. This is the first time I saw you. I said unless the brothers they bring something new that hasn't been addressed before some new claim that has been answered before, there's no point in talking because what you guys are doing, you just bring the same rhetoric on and on and on and on. You just went through a long list of people who were killed and you didn't, you did, I ask you to pick one, one of those names and, and go to the history why that person was killed and where did you get this, this evidence from? You are using our books against us, same books that say that a man, a man chest was opened and his heart was taken away and it was washed by water and was put back. And you are trusting a book that makes such claims. You are trusting our sources when it is convenient to you. But when, when, we, are, when we are talking to you, we are trying to explain to you the way we, we take wisdom and laws from our books, you don't listen. So if you are trusting a book that, that, uh, take, that, that says that a man's heart was taken from his chest and was washed in water, water of Zanzan and was put back and stitched and that man lived until he was 60 or 65, then you can, you, you, if you call this reason, then carry on and use the sources. But if you want to discuss, if you want to discuss uh, the life of the Prophet Muhammad I want to discuss the seer, I want to discuss the Quran, I invite you come to the Islamic college, bring your books and come and talk to me over there. Don't use the techniques of speaker corners because these things, we have been doing these things since 9-11. Since 9-11, we've been, you've been, uh, people have been attacking Islam and accusing the Prophet Muhammad and our seerah, our hadith and our verses of causing deaths and, 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 and encouraging people to, be, to become terrorists. How, what have you achieved since 9 to, till today? Nothing. There are more deaths amongst Muslims. 97% of the victims of terrorism are Muslims. There are more terrorists than before. Before we had 3,000 members of Al-Qaeda spreading the world. Now we have more than 30,000 suspected terrorists in the world. There are more, more deaths. There are more, there's more destruction. What have you achieved? Nothing. Because someone had the brilliant idea to use terrorism to discredit Islam. Excuse me, it didn't work. There are more Muslims, there are more victims amongst us, and there are more terrorists. You need to find that you convinced maybe some people to not convert to Islam because you scared them of this, of us. Fair enough. You convinced some people to leave Islam because you scared them about these things. Fair enough. But have you achieved something? Zero. You haven't so, taken my, you didn't take my faith out of my, my heart. And I'm inviting you. If you want to study, come to the classroom. I'll be more, more than happy to teach you and to learn from you. So I, I'd encourage you actually the two of you to connect external to this. What I'm going to do now, because it's re related to what both of you've said, I'm actually going to play a few more videos to give context of the kind of things that Hatun did. So Hatun has may because she is absolutely fearless and very focused on her mission, um, she's made a lot of enemies in the park. And I'm going to show why she may have made some of those enemies for the viewers that aren't familiar with the type of work that she does. And then I'm going to play some of the reactions from both the people at the corner, from well-known Dawa carriers, and from the actual police themselves. So I'm going to play four videos, and then we'll, we'll discuss the, those four videos, because I think it's very important for the viewers who may not be as familiar as we are. So the first one I'm going to play is Holes in the Narrative, which is this video. So it's going to upload. Can you tell me about the holes in the narrative? May Allah crush me. As Allah crushed Muhammad by poisoning Muhammad. Can you please tell me about the holes in the narrative? So for those that weren't able, because it was quite a short clip, it starts with um, an extremist cursing her and saying, may Allah 
rid so like rid you or get rid of you may Allah crush you so it starts with an extremist attacking her she then raises a picture a cartoon of Muhammad and she raises a, a copy of the Quran which has holes in it and I'll, I'll Bob's probably best posed to to comment on why she has that because it was to do with an online conversation where a very well-known Muslim cleric um, admitted that he believed there were holes in the narrative on a personal level if somebody took the Torah and drilled holes in it I'd be offended but that's the beauty of speaker's corner you can be offended like, it, it, I don't know a single Jew that would take a knife to somebody because they drew Moses or because they drilled a hole in our holy books I just I don't I maybe somewhere in the world there is some extreme fanatical Jew but the reason why it's really important here is I will go on to play a number of clips to show the type of violent and extreme reactions that Hatton has received for the type of um, message that she brings to the speaker's corner. So I'll just actually, before commenting on that, I'm going to play two more clips. Um, they're not violent, but they are pretty vile in, in what happened. So the first one is to do with the type of intimidation. you haven't read it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You're a disrespectful bitch. I challenge you. Go to France. Go to France and wear it. I challenge you. Go to France and wear it. So, why he's saying go to France and wear that is he believes that she will be killed if she goes to France with a Charlie Hebdo t shirt or if she goes to France, which was the t shirt she was wearing when she was attacked on, on Sunday. Um, I'm not sure if it was this gentleman, it may have been a different instance, but there was another mass gentleman that actually hit her in the face and knocked her unconscious, as Steve mentioned earlier. I'm going to play one more clip and then we'll have a quick conversation about the level of hatred and extreme aggression that this tiny little Turkish woman experiences at Speaker's Corner. Um, so let me just... So have I actually got that? So maybe it's this one. Yeah, here we go. If it happened and it, it, it's yeah, written yeah. in Sahih yeah. al Bukhari yeah. 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 and in Sahih Muslim, then we believe it. So there's I uploaded the wrong one, but it was basically Ali Dawa screaming at this little woman i will spit in your face i will spit in your face and so i think having seen the the type of message that she spreads at speaker's corner and then the violent reaction which has resulted in a terror attack on sunday and an attempt on her life i think it is maybe a good place to discuss what happens and maybe steve this is a good one for you because you're not religious you're an atheist maybe you're a good person to to speak um about what we've just seen um i mean firstly i just want to say one thing yassim said um in in the latter moments that he was speaking um that he was speaking that i absolutely agree um and that is that the biggest victim of islamist violence are muslims i've always said that they are the ones that suffer at these violent scum's hands um so anyway someone someone mentioned in, mentioned in the chat earlier why why haven't the police dealt with hatun why haven't the police dealt with her she's breaking the public order act now what hatun did last sunday hatun has been doing for weeks for months for getting on years if she was breaking the law in any way shape or form do you really think the police wouldn't have arrested her, charged her, and quite frankly thrown her in prison? But they haven't. They have they have taken her away for her own safety, but never has she been given any charge, conviction, or caution. And that's because she's not breaking the law. 
as offensive as some people might find what she does and what she says, she is firmly within the law. And, and the person that's challenged, why haven't the police dealt with her, mentioned the Public Order Act. Well, if I may, I'm going to read out the section of the Public Order Act, which completely makes what Hatoon has done, week in, week out, completely lawful and completely within the realms of the law. It's a very short um, section. It's section 29J of the Public Order Act. Anyone can Google it. Just Google section 29J Public Order Act. And what it says is, nothing in this shall be read or given effect in a way which prohibits or restricts discussion, criticism or expressions of antipathy, dislike, ridicule, insult or abuse of particular religions or the beliefs or practices of their adherents or of any other belief system or the beliefs or practices of its adherents or proselytizing or urging adherents of a different religion or belief system to cease practicing their religion. So in black and white, what she does is completely lawful. The House of Lords inserted that section into the Public Order Act when the hate crimes were introduced um, 10, 10, 15 years ago because they were concerned that people would, could be limited under the hate crime law from ridiculing, challenging, insulting religion. And the House of Lords did something very good that day by inserting this clause. So what Hatoon has done is complete within the realms of English law. Now, people literally do not accept that. They don't like that. That's why they take the law into their own hands on Sunday to the extent of trying to murder the poor girl, because simply they cannot accept the British law. And I'm sure, you know, Yassine can tell us how, how you know, it is an innate aspect of Islamic law that you that you follow the law of the local land that you live in. So clearly, you know, these idiots, if if it was a Muslim, and I do want to say we don't yet know who the culprit was. We don't know what religion he was. You know, we, we, we could all put money on what the probability will turn out to be. But the fact of the matter is currently we do know we do not know who it was. But at the end of the day, what she has done is completely within the realms of the law. But there are these violent scum who think they can apply their own diktats, their own Sharia law, their own blasphemy, whatever you want to call it, because they do not accept what is lawful within the English law. Um, could I jump in? Just Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, um, I, I would go, no, uh, Steve's covered the legal point, Perfectly. I mean, legally, she's she's not breaking any law at all. Um, she owns the Quran that she's drilled holes into. It's her own private possession. Um, and she can do with it whatever she wants. And if people don't like it, they don't have to stand next to her. They don't have to be there. They don't have to give her attention. They can walk away. Um, and, and some Muslims down at the corner have tried to do that. Um, and, and if Hatun follows them around, then they can go to the police and say, will you stop Hatun following me around, please? And, and, and there's, so there's completely legal ways of dealing with what Hatun is doing. And if you find, um, you know, as I find so much Islamic rhetoric to be hateful against Christians and Jews, um, if you find uh, speech to be hateful, the, the best way to defeat it is with better speech. You know, so, you know, rather than rather than getting angry, you, you need to be be challenging um, Hatun uh, for her behavior and, and and defeating her in debate, not trying to kill her. And, you know, and, and I can't believe I've got to actually put that into a sentence. Um, but but I would go further and say that she's not doing anything morally wrong. You know, she's not doing anything morally wrong. The prophets of the Old Testament destroyed pagan idols. The saints of the Christian church have destroyed pagan idols. Muhammad himself um, destroyed pagan idols. And he sent out in Sahih al-Muslim 832, it reads, Urwa ibn Abbasa, that he said to the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, with what were you sent? He said, I was sent to uphold the ties of kinship, to break idols 
so that Allah would be worshipped alone with no partner or associate. And Islam have, uh, Muslims for 1400 years have desecrated thousands upon thousands of churches um, and thousands upon thousands of Christian artifacts. So Muslims can't complain if someone, if someone vandalizes a Quran given the precedence of the Old Testament prophets or the precedent of their own prophet or the practice of Muslims down through 1400 years. Um, the way to defeat something, if you find it hateful, is to defeat it with better speech. Um, and personally, I would never do what Hatun has done um, because, you know, I, I think that the rule of doing to others as you would have them done unto you applies. And I wouldn't want anyone to desecrate a Bible, so I wouldn't desecrate a Quran. And also I see the Quran as a human construct that has been invented by humans. It's part of human history and it is a, a, a significant human piece of literature and therefore should be respected as part of a world heritage. Um, and so for that reason, I wouldn't desecrate the Quran either. But the, the appropriate response, I, I, so she's not doing anything morally wrong. She's not doing anything legally wrong. Um, and if people don't like it, the way to deal with it is you either move away from her and you don't give her any attention or you defeat her speech with better speech. But there can be no justification in any way for the way that um, the Taoists at the park have been treating Hatun for months and inciting hatred against her, which is the, cult, the, 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 the milieu into which this attack has emerged. I'm just going to jump in. Um, Justin, if you want to reply to this, then I'm going to move us on to the reactions, yeah, like what's yeah, happened. And then, I, I, have yeah. two, I have two parts, please. Firstly, in, in the meantime, I'm talking, I, I want to invite Brother Bob because he likes to Google stuff. I want him to Google verse, uh, chapter 29, verse 46, and have a read of it. Chapter 29, verse 46 from the Quran. Secondly, I want him to Google for me as well 10 names and locations of, of, of churches out of the thousands that Muslims desecrated and destroyed over the, our history. But prepare for me 10, yeah? In the meantime... I can do that right now. No, 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 I'm talking, so just listen. And if you want to do it, you can do it. Otherwise, you ignore, you ignore me. Give me 10 churches and locations. In the meantime, take my 200 mosques you, t you transformed in Sicilia into, into church, and you got Granada, you got everywhere. I don't even need to, to help you out with that. Now, back to my Muslim brothers who are assaulting a woman, a British woman, exerting her right of freedom to speech. If you are a Muslim, you are listening to me. What I have to say, this, what I'm going to say now is, uh, is directed to Muslim. If you don't like the law of this country, or you feel that the law of this country is not protecting your religion enough, if you think, if you think that what wom that woman was doing is against your religion, and the law, the English law is not protecting your, your religion enough, you have to pack your suit and go away from this place. Okay? You have to leave. There isn't a second chance or discussion or even time to waste with people like you. You need to go away because you came to this country as a guest with 100 years ago, 50, 50 years ago, five years ago, 500 years ago. This is not a place to where we belong as, 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 as individuals. We need, to, we need to tell the truth. We came here because we were allowed to come here for one reason or another. Some of us came here as students. Some of us came here as uh, citizens of former colonies and the history is long. So you were allowed to come here, yeah? There is a law that is in place in here. If you don't like it, you need to go away. Secondly, if you want to preach the Quran, firstly, you have, need to have knowledge. You cannot go and preach the Quran and contradict it at the same time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you, don't, don't, don't discuss with the people of the book except with the good manners. And he told you, when they, when, don't swear. I, you saw the, the boy swearing, that was swearing. The verse I give you to check. It says, don't swear. Don't swear. It is, it is chapter number 6, verse 108. Don't swear to, to, to those who call someone beside Allah because they will swear back at you. Don't do it. So these boys, they contradict the Quran. They are in no position to teach. To, they have nothing to teach. That's, that's the first thing I have to say. Secondly, I saw the sister. She was taking a copy of the Quran like this and with a hole on it. Yeah, Brother Joseph to, uh, made me... Th thank you for making the, 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 the comparison with the Torah, I understand. But I have to tell you something. In, in the Judaism, you, you venerate, you respect the, the, the body of the Torah. 
and uh, non, non, non Jew cannot touch it because you respect the body of the Torah because this is how it was revealed to you. It was revealed to you in object. For us, the Quran was revealed to us in words. The Quran is a verbal revelation. What you see here, everyone, what you see here, this is not the Quran. This is ink and paper. Wake up, people. This, if you don't read it, if you don't comply, if you don't understand it, if you don't comply with what it says, it is not the Quran. It is ink on paper. We respect it because obviously we respect the word of God. But the respect is not binding to others. The respect is coming from you because you are Muslim. You believe this is the word of God and you are expected to respect it. But you cannot expect someone who is a kafir, who is a mulhid, who is, who is, who is a non-believer, who, who have nothing to do with this. You can expect from me to, to, to respect it. Just like you can expect from me to, to respect, I don't know, because mostly we respect everything, even if, if people, they say we don't. Uh, so, 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 so let it be this way. So this is ink and paper. If someone is offended, go back to school. So third point I want to, to repeat to, to Brother Steve. I think I, I talked about the, the law of the land. I think I spoke about the Quran. And again, Brother Bob, please stop googling stuff and throwing it at people. It doesn't work. It didn't work over the last 20 years. It didn't stop Islam from growing. Okay, so I'm just going to jump in and I'm actually going to correct you on one thing, Jason. And that is, it's not that a non-Jew can't touch the Torah. Nobody touches the Torah. Um, but when it's handled in a synagogue, we actually use something. To, so you'll hold, if you, you need to touch it, you take a cloth or a, a tallow de pressure and you'll use that to touch it. So it's not that non-Jews, nobody can touch it. It's, it's, we believe it's a sacred object. And that's why I said I would be horrified if someone desecrated a Torah. But... If it was Jewish property, I'd call the police. If it was their property, I'd just think that um, I'd be offended. But I can't imagine any Jew in the UK going to the extreme levels of violence that we saw. Um, so I'm going to let Bob say, because he's got a finger, a finger up like we're at school, which is really polite, um, good Christian manners. And uh, so what I'm going to do, I'll let Bob respond, and then I'm going to actually take us to some of the reactions from many Muslims that have just been spreading like wildfire on, on social media. So um, I, I, I just want to point out, um, again, Muslims can't complain the example of their prophet in Muslim, Sahel Muslim 969. Um, it was reported by Ali ibn Abi Talib said to me, shall I not send you with the same instruction as the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, sent me? Do not leave any image without defacing it or any built up grave without leveling it. This is a, a Sahih al-Dith of the, the kind that legitimizes Islamic vandalism um, that has been perpetrated against Christian places of worship in, in many areas dominated by Islam and even places where they're just, you know, Muslim vandals. Now, he, he, get, he asked me to give him 10 churches. Right. Well, here's a list. Hagia Sophia um, in Constantinople, the Church of the Holy Apostles, the Church of the Pantocrator, the Church of St. Sergius and St. Bacchus, the Church of St. Andrew in Crisse, the Church of St. Thecla uh, of the Palace of Blacane, the Nunnery of St. Theodosia, the Church, uh, the Cora Church, the Monastery of Studius, the Church of St. John, the Church of Mirilien, the Catholic Church of St. Paul, the Lips Monastery, the Monastery of Christ uh, Pantopoptis. Th there you go. That's, I think, maybe 10. It might be more than 10. It could be just shy of 10. I can keep going. There's plenty of others. And it's not just, and that, the, that list I've given you was just from Turkey, um, which up until the um, genocide against um, Armenian Christians, Assyrian Christians, and Greek Christians had a population that was 30% Christian, and then they were butchered, or maybe it was 20%. Um, but either way, we're talking about millions of people and the destruction of those communities and the desecration of those churches. Let's not men let's not forget the desecration of the, Hag uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, and the fact that the mosque of uh, the Dome of the Rock was built out of pillaged and um, ravaged um, marble from churches in Jerusalem and the surrounding area. So, you know, that Muslims are doing 
what Muhammad did. And so Muslims can't complain if someone desecrates a Quran as um, because because their own prophet has, has desecrated the sacred places of other other religions, pagans um, and and then sent out um, Christian uh, Muslims with a command that would lead to the desecration of Christian places. Now, um, I'm not going to talk for too long. There, there was a lot of things that were said. I, and, uh, you know, and, and I'm just going to give a Quranic verse, which will probably lead on to what you're going to talk about, Joseph, which is the the kind of, you know, the, the vitriol that, that came out against Hatun after this attack, showing an, a kind of inhumanity. The thing is, Steve, Joseph and myself come from a tradition that believes that man is made in the image of God. And therefore, we believe that all human beings are born with an innate dignity that comes prior to any other qualification or factor, including religion itself. Um, but Islam does not share that worldview. In the Quran, it states in Surah 2, Ayah 221, do not marry the unbelieving women until they believe a slave woman who believes is better than an unbelieving woman. This is the same Quran that call, goes on to call Christians and Jews the worst of creatures, the worst of creatures. So within the Islamic worldview, there is a, 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 a pyramid of dignity that goes Islamic free man, Islamic free woman, Islamic slave man, Islamic slave woman, then Christian man, then Christian woman and, and, and Jewish man and then Jewish woman. They don't have that, that view that all human beings are made in the image of God. And even as Yasim was talking, and, and Yasim is evidently a guy with a conscience, he's evidently a guy who, who's of a sound mind, but even he could not resist calling um, us kafirs. Kafirs is an insulting term. You might as well have just called a black man the N-word or an Asian, a p the P word. How do you call because someone it has, it, and Jesus. once again, he's interrupting, and you, once again, he's demonstrating poor manners, and once again, he's demonstrating the, the fact that he does not see us as equals on you, this you panel, you and he is demonstrating you, by his yeah, works yeah, the fruits yeah, of his yeah. religion as being a disciple of Muhammad. Because unlike him, I did not interrupt him, and as you can see, I don't stop talking when you interrupt me. So the the, the, the point is, even is even Yastin, there you go again. He's interrupting. So I was literally just about to finish my point, but now I'm just going to have to keep talking, and we'll just keep talking over one of the lines. That's a 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 couldn't resist calling us kafirs and murtads or murtads. Uh, forgive my pronunciation. These are insulting terms, ladies and gentlemen. Be me, mis no mistake. He'll translate it as simply unbeliever, but there's emotional connotations connected behind the term kafir. The idea of being ritually unclean. The idea of being less than 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 fully human. The worst of creatures. Um, and and so. His religion, even even when he has a, has a good conscience, still results in a supremacist language, and you all need to wake up to that. And there are there's a better way of living, I think, and and that is living as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ rather than living as a disciple of Muhammad. Okay, brother, thank you for exposing your own ignorance. You just said that the use of word kafir is a is a pejorative. Obviously, I don't expect from you to understand Arabic because it's a very complicated language. You need to have learned it from, from childhood. Can you give but me an example where kafir is used as a compliment? Can, do, would, can you give me an example of where you call someone kafir as a compliment? Yeah. Ibrahim, yeah. he says about himself, he's a kafir in verse 60, chapter number 4. Ibrahim, and he said that as a compliment, did he? Ibrahim, what, what passage, please? Passage, please. Kafir. What passage? It is uh, verse 60. Six no, zero. Sorry, chapter six zero. Six zero, yeah. Verse number four. Verse number four. We're going to see it as a compliment, I'll, I'll it right? Arabic and you can check it. قد كان لكم أسوة حسنة في إبراهيم والذين معه قالوا لقومهم إن براء منكم ومما تعبدون من دون الله كفرنا بكم وبدأ وبيننا وبينكم العداوة والبغضاء أبدا حتى تؤمنوا بالله وحده. إبراهيم دوان عليه السلام. The one who, who was who, 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 the father of all the religions, 
he said, I'm a kafir. So when I am calling you kafir, actually I'm doing, doing you a favor. I could, I could, because I'm, 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 but what I'm trying to explain to you, the word kafir, is, that, it's, not, it's not a pejorative. There was a time when Muslims, they, had, uh, they mistreated and, and they persecuted non-Muslims. But this doesn't mean that the word itself is pejorative. Because if we were going to use that same logic, even the word Jew would be pejorative. Even the word Muslim would be pejorative. Even the word Salafi would be pejorative. We don't, we don't judge words based on, on historical uh, 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 periods or historical behavior. We judge the words based it's called there's something called etymology. That's why I called you. Come to the classroom, I will teach you. And, and the way that you can pay me is that I will learn from you as well. This isn't really the subject I think we're here to discuss, though. It's yeah. as interesting as you two might find it. Yes, I, yes exactly. And I was going to say the very same thing, Steve. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to move us on to some of the reactions of the, um, the of some Muslims online, um, which I found absolutely horrifying when I when I saw. So bear with me. Let me just. Okay, so Hatton deserved it. I don't care. The cuffs, um, kafir, um, relevant to, to the conversation we've just had. The cuffs are cowards. They'll see a few more of these guys getting stabbed, and then they'll shut it. So what this Ms. the Fizz, um, while I don't believe in cancel culture, I'm sure a few people will be reporting him, um, but what he's effectively saying is that he hopes there's more terror attacks like this so that people don't insult his religion. And now this is a free country. If someone wants to insult, insult Judaism, Judaism, Mazel Tov, they're entitled to. And somebody should be able to insult Islam. That's a, a sincere belief of mine. Um, next comment. Was that, yeah. I literally have no sympathy for anyone who insults our Prophet Muhammad, um, peace be upon him. Good riddance, Hatun. So this person thinks Hatun's being killed. And is saying good riddance. Next comment. Harmless. Her fame. So this is a response. Her fame among the Paulians of uh, Christians does harm the layman brothers and sisters. The women. The woman is a tr is a trash. And if this country were following Sharia, she'd be gone long ago, and we'd be laughing in your faces. Hatun deserved it. Some of you need to grow a spine. If you think those blasphemous preachers should be dealt with, adab and Ethiram. Um, Jessam, you'll maybe need to uh, help me out with what that means after taking us through. Adab if means you good manner, Ethiram means respect. Good manner and respect. Thank, good you. thank you. If um, So the blasphemous spirit should be dealt with with good manners and respect. If you don't agree with me, let me cuss your mum out and ask you to guide me with kind words. So that's actually, this is a crazy comment. So he's saying she deserved it, but the right way to deal with um, well, he describes as blasphemous preachers as good manners and respect. So, if your idea of good manners and respect is stabbing someone in the face, we have a very different definition. Um, <laughs> Token Scott. And so, then there, there were comments on Twitter. There's a few comments from YouTube. This is on Ali Dawa's video, one of Ali Dawa's videos. So, Ali Dawa, um, quickly put out a piece to distance himself from the terror attack. You'll actually find that. I believe, and it's where we're going to go to, that there's a certain responsibility on those that are demonized to their to their huge audiences. Um, I believe has played a radicalizing part in some of this. But anyway, Ali Dawa quickly put out a video, and one of the things he said was because this Muslim had, that this terrorist had undone years of Dawa work that they'd been doing at the park, that... Allah should break his back. And so this was the response to from one of his subscribers or one of his followers on his video. Ali, whoever insults the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa deserves worse. So he deserves worse than being stabbed in the face. Another person, this was in response to a video of Ali Dawa that was posted on another channel called Sam Dawa. Ali, you don't get to trash the guy with the knife. He did it because they were insulting Muhammad, peace be upon him, on daily basis. And he loves Muhammad, peace be upon him, more than you. So the terrorist loves Muhammad more than Ali. Someone else writes on, on one of Ali's videos, is Hatun dead? Someone responds, sadly, no. If I was in the park, 
she would be in hospital long ago for her hate preaching. So that's effectively the just a few. I've got videos as well from the actual instance. Actually, I'll tell you what, why don't we play the, the, one of those videos and then we will um, open up the conversation to the, the reaction online, which has just been absolutely, absolutely shocking. So let me just um, play the here we go. One last video. <laughs> so effectively what they're the individual saying or maybe it's more than one person but at least one person saying that hatun had it coming she 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 had a terror attack coming um so yeah, what I'll do, I'll now open the Steve, you've because the there we've got a little sidetrack with the Christian Islamic <laughs> apologetics. Um, I'll, I'll let Steve I'll let Steve jump in and give give his thoughts on, on the reactions online. Yeah, I mean it, it it's self um it it's just self apparent, it's undeniable, instantaneous, you know, whether it was verbally when the girl was still sitting on the floor with blood coming down her her face it started it started immediately online you know within one two hours that that videos videos were up on youtube with 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 banner you know with titles with names that that were celebrating the attack the, the comments starting um Many, many of them from names that, that you would assume are, are Muslim, people that were self-identifying online as Muslim, some with names that didn't sound Muslim. But the absolute vile, vile hate and encouragement and that she deserved it and that she should have more and that anyone else doing the same should have more was absolutely vile. And, it, and it's bizarre because we've heard so much about the social media platforms censoring people. Well... <laughs> they're going to have their time on their hands if they were equal and, and doing it and this, because, you know, there are people who are glorifying terror. There are people who are encouraging terror and these comments are, are sitting on these social media platforms. And, you know, the people who, whose YouTube channels, um, some of these comments are on, you know, if it's, if it's your channel, you have the, the, the obligation, the legal obligation under the terms and conditions of, of social media platforms like um, YouTube to govern the comments that are made and to delete any comments that, that, that are inappropriate. And they're still up there on these people's channels, whatever the people might be saying themselves. But of course, a lot of these Dawa clowns, their first priority is not Dawa. Their first priority is protecting their huge base and their huge income from their monetization of videos. That is their first call. That is their first concern to protect that. Um, but they're, they're sailing close to the wind by the number of by the sorts of comments that they've got. But an, another aspect of reaction that I'd like to discuss now, whether we come back to this later or whether I cover it now, is the British press and how they've reacted to, to the situation. Um, shall I cover that now? Yeah, and also I had a video of the police and their reaction as well. Because I think so. Tell you what, Steve. Let's come to the police and the press after, but let's deal with the yeah. the, the reaction of the Muslim community. Uh, not the Muslim community, because most Muslims in the UK are absolutely oblivious to this. But the online followers of these Dawa preachers. Um, so yeah, let's, let's leave it relevant. Bob, you've got your hand up. Uh, <laughs> why not jump in? So I mean, I I, I just want to. I, I know you guys think that that I, I'm I'm running some kind I'm trying to run some kind of sideshow here, but I, I'm not running a sideshow. What I'm trying to point out to you guys is that within the Islamic literature there is a supremacist uh, monologue that goes on that you can lift up and you can tune into. Now it appears that Yasim doesn't buy into that he's he's not bought into that kind of supremacist narrative but it is there in the literature the people that attacked hatun have bought into a supremacist violent narrative that you can construct from islamic literature like for the fact that muhammad had people killed 
for insulting him, such as Asma bint Marwan. And I can give you the references if you want them, Yasim. So, like, you know, and, and the idea of, of, of striking terror into the hearts of the unbelievers and the idea that an, an, a believing slave woman is better than an unbeliever. And as, as we saw, the word kafir was being used as an insult by one of these Islamist punks. Now, the, the point that I'm, I'm making is that these people are buying into that narrative. Now, I want to stress, I don't believe that every Muslim buys into that narrative. What I'm pointing out is that that narrative is there to be bought into if you are so attuned. And people like the Dawa team are the soft end of what I think is an Islamist network. And um, they have incited hatred against Hatun for weeks upon weeks upon weeks on their YouTube channels. They have called her every name under the sun. They themselves, and you've, you've caught it on film uh, yourself, Joseph, they have behaved in an, an abhorrent, unchivalrous fashion towards her. She's a, she, you know, she's a small woman for crying out loud. Um, and and their their fanboys are simply imitating Don't be sexist. Them. their fanboys. Now, once again, Yasim in, interrupts, and he's just demonstrating everything yeah, that I'm saying. Like he's demonstrating like everything that I'm saying. How many times have I inter interrupted Yasim no, when you you've given him the floor, Joseph? Not once. But yet, but yet, Yasim has interrupted me since his arrival every time that I've spoke because Yasim believes that he is superior to the unbeliever. And he's nodding his head and he's saying yes his facial expressions are telling you that's what he thinks and and so this is and thumbs up there you go and this is this is the kind of this is the kind of ideology that we're up against that even people like yasim who won't agree with using violence and who doesn't believe in in attacking people with knives and, and i'll credit him for that he still has a supremacist tone to his attitudes towards other people because that's what his ideology teaches him and and that's what i'm trying to point out to you so i'm not trying to run a sideshow and so i find it really hollow that the the dawa team are now trying to distance themselves from the attack from the very you know multiple attacks against hatun but this one being the worst they're trying to distance themselves from that attack when for weeks and weeks and weeks they have been encouraging vitriol and hatred towards Hatun through their platforms. And I don't think that that should be ignored by anyone. Thank you, brother. I Just to change the tone, I want to read your quote here from someone who is not a Muslim and who is definitely respected by all the British people. Uh, Sir... Alex Younger, former head of MI6, talking about the war against Daesh. He says that Britain is, the, is at the forefront of the war because of its ability to bring the war to the heart of the enemy. He, he, I quote him, he was saying, they know that the result of being in, in identified as MI6 agent could be their death. However, they do what they do because they believe in protecting their country the while we are in, and their religion, the one in which I believe. So protecting their country and their religion. While you, you and me are sitting here having the luxury to have a, a, free, a, a debate, there are Muslim agents who are risking their life to protect you and me, and you are insulting their religion, but they are protecting also their religion. And that, that was acknowledged by, uh, by uh, the former head of MI6 himself. To protect their country and their religion from the evil that Daesh, ISIS, and other terrorist organizations represent. So, I don't think you know better than the former head of MI6. I don't think you listened do you? to what I said. No, do you? You do didn't know listen to what you? I said, yes. But anyway, it'll be a sideshow if me and you oh, get to it. Fine. But you didn't right. listen to what I said. Okay. I'm going to jump in now then. And so, yeah, in terms of the reactions, I think uh, Steve wanted to also touch on the police. I've actually got a video just so people can see the absurdity of what happened. Um, so, Hatun is one woman. She's what five foot <laughs> nothing. She's um, she's got a very she can project her voice, but she's she's not that intimidating physically. And this is how the police respond to her being attacked, and it's happened on numerous occasions. Sorry, there we go. 
I mean, it, it's absurd. It is absolutely insane that when, and it's one of, for me, it's one of the most depressing things about our police force in the UK is instead of arresting those that are causing the violence, they go for the person that's easiest to remove. And it happens, uh, the latest one was actually when, again, Ali Dawa and Mohammed Hijab organized a counter protest to the Israeli um, protest, actually, uh, both Steve and Bob Barat, where we were celebrating the ceasefire, we were celebrating the existence of Israel, <laughs> the survival of the Jewish state. Um, and Justin, actually, you were there, but I missed you. Also, <laughs> we, we could have all went for a coffee. Um, but I've been, I've been disobedient to, to my own Quran, according to Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bob, because I was supporting uh, the Jews. <laughs> and so the the we were at that and you had marching up the streets again an islamist thug screaming for the blood of jews saying they were going to find some zionists we want their blood we want the jews and the police officers just marching alongside him why because there's an entire like there's a mob and they're worried that if you arrest one of the perpetrators it could lead to a greater breach of the peace. And I think this happens time and time again at Speaker's Corner. Every time I've been violently assaulted, I've been removed from the park. Now, anyone that knows me knows that I'm not a violent man. And I would say that every time I've been assaulted at Speaker's Corner, it's always by a Muslim, and it's always Muslims that come to my defense. And so it's this isn't a one shoe fits all, size fits all. It's There are multiple different groups of Muslims at Speaker's Corner some of them violent, some of them incredibly peaceful. And every time I find myself slipping into a, 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 a negative stereotype about Muslims, I think of people like Jasm. I think of, I'm not going to name, there's another individual at Speakers Connor who may be watching this and his, his name rhymes with yours. And he's one of the most gentle, kindest people I've ever met. And the, those that carry out these heinous terror attacks do so in the name of Islam. And those that give zakat, Sadaka, that give charity, that help the poor, that defend me, also do so in the name of Islam. And they just read the religion incredibly differently. So, yeah, the police, I think, have handled this appallingly. And the press, Steve, you're probably more qualified to give a better analysis because you've been paying much more attention to it. But, yeah, maybe I'll hand it over to you, Steve, to talk about the police and the, the media. Okay, well, let's let's start with the police then, shall we? Because obviously the culprit is the absolute first one that has to be held account for this. But I do personally strongly believe that both the Darwa teams and the police have to be held accountable for, for what happened on Sunday. Um, the Darwa teams, you know, as, as you've said, I won't repeat it all, but, you know, their behaviour towards Hatoon, their rhetoric o over months absolutely has led to what happened on Sunday. You know, whether it's them spitting in her face, threatening to spit in her face, face, pulling chairs away from her, the continual rhetoric about her being a hate preacher, about her being racist, about her needing to be put away. They, you know, they have to hold some responsibility for this. You know, their, their Weasley words that they're coming out with now will not erase our memories of what their behaviour and what they've been saying for weeks and months um, will not be removed. So they have to be held accountable, but also the police. So firstly, I will say, I'm sure people have, it's not gone unnoticed that there was a police car sitting within yards of this offence. And that police car drove forward when when it realized something was going on and 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 followed behind the the attacker as he ran off and they failed to catch him now firstly i want to say what were the police doing sitting in their car they always sit in their car come rain or shine they sit in their car not like the um, previous police officer, PC Steve Barnes, who always was walking around, cycling around, conversing with people, talking to people, building up relationships, building up that community. They sit in their, on their asses in their panda cars. They can't even be bothered to get out. Now, if those police officers weren't sitting on their asses in their car when this happened, maybe they could have prevented it from happening in the first place. Maybe they could have stood a chance of catching um, this attacker. So that, that was the police behaviour on the day. But 
literally, and it comes back to, you know, Steve Barnes built up so much trust amongst all communities at Speaker's Corner, and nothing like this happened on his watch. He retires, and within weeks, we, we have a near murder happening. The police really need to analyse how they're behaving at Speaker's Corner. You know, the, the community that was built up, we had the forum that, that Steve instigated, which unfortunately not none of the Dawa teams attended, but we, we did have one or two Muslims coming, including Paul Williams. You know, that really helped build the community, helped build dialogue, helped build the sharing of intelligence and the prevention of crime at Speaker's Corner. Crime plummeted during the existence of that forum. And, and Steve Barnes should absolutely be proud of, of, of being the, the backbone that achieved that. The police, quite frankly, now, the Royal Parks Police are shameful you know, they really need to think, what, what is their purpose? What is their purpose of just sitting in their car all day long? And then they disappear off at five o'clock. And, and we all know, unfortunately, invariably, any trouble, any violence, any fights that break out, and, and recently these have been more inter-Muslim inter fights between Shia and, Shia and Sunni, they always happen six, five, six, seven, eight o'clock. And the police are nowhere to be seen. And, and we, we, we were told in the past that there was a resource problem or, you know, public funding, underfunding, et cetera, et cetera. Well, sorry to bring in lockdown, but during lockdown, they managed to find enough resource to police um, Speaker's Corner to make sure that no one even loitered momentarily to dare speak in Speaker's Corner during whatever level of lockdown. So for, 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 for you know, for the deadly China virus, they can find resources, but they can't find resources to stop violence and, and now potential murders in Speaker's Corner. So I very much hope the police are going to be thinking about their tactics and that we'll see a change in the future and we'll have a return to community policing and proactive policing that can prevent awful nonsense like this happening again. I'd, I'd just like to add one thing and then I'll let Bob jump in. First and foremost, you probably just got this video demonetized by mentioning the C word. Cheers, Steve. Oh, <laughs> I, I would have probably made 23p on this video. That's, <laughs> that's a quarter of a bottle of water. Um, well, I also saw a, a, a letter that you shared um, where someone had written, someone, a, a regular at Speaker's Corner who'd been there for 30 years and had mentioned that a lot of this violence, and I mean, it is clearly documented, is coming from Muslims. And because he said that, um, he got in, <laughs> he got scolded by the police for even mentioning the M word. And it, we live in such a politically correct culture that you can't actually comment on that. I make one exception when the EDL, and there's probably going to be a similar type patriot type um, gathering on Sunday. When they come down, there's also violence. But week in, week out, there's Muslim violence at Speaker's Corner. And it's usually Muslim on Muslim. Shia, Sunni, Sunni, Sunni is, is usually, occasionally it spills out to myself, to maybe Bob. I don't know if they've ever gone for you. Um, but usually it's Muslims attacking Muslims. But if you can't even mention this without being accused of Islamophobia or racism, how is the how is the police supposed to deal with it? It's such a bizarre place to find ourselves where we can't even mention where this is. Because you know, what we're not saying is that Muslims are violent. What we're saying is Speaker's Corner has a problem with extremism, and it's coming largely from the Muslim community. And there are extremists that come there. We've had the BMP there, we've had the EDL there, and I see both of those groups as, as extreme. But, and I'm sure Steve maybe has a difference of opinion. Well, on, can, on I, can I just intervene? Because you, you, you mentioned there that, you know, we might have people coming on Sunday. But can I just stress, and I've, and I've tweeted this and I will continue to tweet it. We don't want anyone turning up at, on Sunday at Speaker's Corner or any other day who's got any intention of violence. We don't want knuckle draggers. We don't want people from any community, any background, any political background whatsoever, who's going to come for a fight or going to come to seek retribution. We do not want vigilantes at Speaker's Corner. So please, I beg anyone of any ilk who wants to come for a fight or wants to come to shout violence, stay away. You're not wanted by anyone at Speaker's Corner. You don't care about spe um, free speech if that's what you come and do. You come you come, and you all you care about is violence and retribution. You're not wanted. You're not needed at Speaker's Corner. So stay away. So I, I, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. But, um, I, I'll let you jump in. Both of you, I know both um, Jess and, and Bob want to say something. I'll just say one more thing. 
We're going to do something a little unusual. I've never done this before in the Israel advocacy movement. It's a bit of a gamble. Um, but there's a lot of Speakers Corner regulars in the chat screaming, let me on, let me on, let me on. We will actually open up the discussion. We're going to have, after we've just discussed this, we're going to very briefly touch on responsible. Who is responsible for the terror attack? Obviously, the the the, the scumbag that carried out the attack. But I believe it's not an isolated event. And I'd like to give some examples. We'll close that conversation. Then any of the panel that wants to remain and talk to the Speaker's Corner regulars, you're more than welcome to stay on. Anyone that wants to go to bed, see their families, is completely understandable as well. Um, One thing I didn't touch on then that I wanted to touch on is the media. media. Yeah. Like do, do, you, do you want to quickly do the media and then we'll let yeah, Jeff yeah, yeah. Because I probably will leave when you, when you open it up. Um, well, we'll see how it goes anyway. But the media, I think we you know we cannot we cannot um, have this live stream without commenting on the media and their response or or lack of. Um, in terms of TV news, as far as I'm aware, the only coverage has been ten minutes on GB News last night. They have made no reference to the subject whatsoever all day today. As, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm aware. BBC London, I understand, last night spent five seconds on it. Um, literally, a, a, a woman was, was stabbed at Speaker's Corner. I think very little more than was said of that. So that's, that's the sum total of what our TV news media. Um, most of the news websites have have included small items on it, but they've all been headed, woman with Charlie Hebdo t-shirt was attacked. Um, not gone into who she is, what her background is, what she does there, any, any of the detail or any of the history whatsoever. Now, you know, I, I'd be, I, I've written articles on this. Um, I've, I've tweeted links to these articles. I've contacted um, media organisations via, via Twitter. I've tweeted um, news organisations. Let's not exaggerate it. You know, they, they I, I don't think they've got the excuse not to know about it. And I think that the, the absolute lack of coverage and lack of detailed coverage stinks to high heaven. And as people have said, if the, if the, if the, if the shoe had been on the other foot, we know how the media would have reacted. You know, I could, I'm not going to, but I could give examples of other cases in recent history in this country where something has happened in the, in the opposite direction in terms of community on community violence or, or alleged violence that have been turned into media frenzies. Yet, as we said, a small woman who's never physically threatened or intimidated anyone gets slashed in the face, attempted murder, a terrorist attack, and uh, it's just dribs of our media. Yet we look over to the other side of the world, and I, I tweeted a link to this earlier, Sky News in Australia, which anyone that knows about it will appreciate it's very different to Sky News in, in the UK, did a very, very thorough piece on it. And, and actually, you know, covered it in as much detail as we've covered it in tonight, particularly in terms of the history and, and the previous attacks on Hatun Tash. So if a media organisation the other side of the bloody world can go into the detail and give a detailed um you know, of what exactly happened, an analysis of that. Why the hell can our own media not do that? Now, you know, if that is not a serious problem that we need to think about and, and analyse, I don't know what is. What are, are they so intimidated? Is there a D notice? Has a D notice been issued by the state on this subject? Because it, 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 it amazes me the fact that GB News started to go into it yesterday and today they've been absolutely silent on it um, and no other TV channels have touched it, local or national. Something's going on here. You know, where, where, whether it's a D-notice from the state, um, which will mean you'll probably be getting another strike, <laughs> Joe Joseph, for this, for this thing, although they seem to be leaving YouTube alone for now. You know, there's something seriously wrong in our society. If a sub I know we all live in our bubbles and uh, et cetera, et cetera, but this is a matter that's of relevance beyond anyone's bubble, surely to goodness. And as we've said, most British Muslims won't know about this. Most uh, Any other community will not know about this because our media are not talking about it. Cool. So no, I, yeah, okay. I was going to say I'll, I'll let the others jump in, and um, Bob's got his hand up. So why not, Bob? I mean, I, I'm going to echo um, Steve's 
comments to some degree, but maybe give some examples and to try and move the conversation forward, because I think it's been well established now that there's a double standard in the way that these things are policed, in the way that these things are reported. And so to try and move the conversation forward, rather than as in ad nauseum repeating again and again, look at the double standard, look at the double standard, look at the double standard. I wanna point, I wanna maybe suggest something that everything, everyone can do to stop challenging, changing the double standard. So uh, to, to, to give you an example of I fear that the police are becoming increasingly politicized. I also fear that that's happening in our courts. Um, I think they're being politicized by a liberal progressive ideology that is anything but just righteous or fair. Um, and I think there are serious and, and deliberate attempts to politicize both the police and the courts. And we have activist judges who are basic and activist police officers who are basically um, applying the rule of law through a certain ideological spectrum. Um, and, and some examples that I would give to that, regardless of what you think of Tommy Robinson, whether you like him or you don't, um, when he was campaigning politically in a democratic election to be elected democratically, a Muslim mob was marched by the police to where he was having a political rally, uh, not in a state where these people lived, and they then proceeded to attack the political rally, hurling scissors and bricks and bottles at women and children. Now, you know, it, completely condemnable behavior. And I know there's lots of good Muslims that will also condemn that. I include Yasin amongst them. But the, the reality is the police marched this mob to the place so that they could harass and attack politically. Now, how the heck does that happen? Um, You've also got the, the the fact that we all know, we all know damn well that if a Muslim woman, God forbid that it should happen, and I mean that with the fullness of my heart and soul, but if a Muslim woman was attacked by um, you know, a Jew or a Christian for clearly religious motives, it would be on the news for days, and we would be getting lectures about Islamophobia um, through our politicians, you know. And, and just some examples, you know, like the burning down of churches in Canada, the burning down of churches in France. If the same number of mosques had been burnt down in Canada or France, it would be a news topic for weeks and there'd be lectures and debates and discussions about Islamophobia. So why aren't we talking about Christophobia? We're not talking about Christophobia because the liberal elites have an ideological blind spot. And that ideological blind spot confuses three categories. It confuses the adherent of the religion with the religion itself and then overlays that with a racial dynamic. And because the majority of Muslims come from an ethnic minority, the liberal progressives, who for the most part are upper middle class white folks um, who've, who've never had uh, a black or an Asian friend, they be, but, but fetishize those communities. They feel that those communities can do no wrong. And they have this kind of patronizing inverted racism, believing that these communities can't be held to the same standard as everyone else and that they must be protected in a special way. And so they talk about Islamophobia. But if I criticize, if I criticize the Catholic Church, which lots of people do, and I have done myself. No one accuses me of Catholophobia. If I criticize communism, nobody accuses me of commiphobia. If I criticize Hinduism, no one accuses me of Hinduphobia. And there are plenty of people, plenty of people, who, who, who criticize the Christian faith. They are not accused of having a phobia. But if you criticize Islam, if you criticize Muhammad, if you do the thing that Hatun does, and she's never incited hatred against Muslims, ever, not once. In fact, she's the first, the most adamant person that says that you should love Muslims, and I agree with her. But she is accused of being an Islamophobe. And that is the reason why these things don't get the same coverage that they do. It's because of this ideological blind spot. The police are governing us by the rule of the mob, and they are doing so because the 
ruling elites are spineless, cowardly, conflict-averse, middle-class folk who don't want to and can't envision how you would tackle a consolidated uh, geographical community, which is what we've got with, with the Muslim community, into which there is only a tiny percentage of radicals. I would say, uh, I guess, maybe two or three percent. But that tiny percentage of radicals is, is concentrated in number. And then there's degrees of separation that move out from this tiny degree of radicals to which there are people that have um, leanings towards degrees of how much they buy into the same radical narrative. And when these are com consolidated communities, it makes them very hard to tackle and very hard to challenge. The British government and the Western world is following a policy of poisoning the lake so that it becomes inhospitable to the fish. The fish being the radicals, the lake being the wider Muslim community. It will not work. As Yassin pointed out earlier in the conversation, and as all the research has pointed out from Pew Research and from many others, radical ideology is gaining traction amongst Muslim communities. It isn't losing its traction amongst Muslim communities. It's still a minority, but it is a growing minority. And the reason for that is because the strategy that we're following doesn't work. Um, the the Dawa team have incited uh, hatred against Abu Layth up in, I think it was Bradford or Birmingham, I don't know where he was, Mufti Abu Layth. His house was attacked. They've incited hatred against Hatun. She that they tried to kill her this Sunday. They incited hatred against Cosmic Skeptic. Now, thankfully, he's not being attacked. But can anyone else see a correlation? And I know that correlation doesn't equal cause. I'm fully aware of that. But can anyone? But sometimes it does. Um, now, the, the the media itself um, it, it, that buys into this liberal progressive echo chamber has demonstrated its double standards by, for instance, the way it covers persecution of religious minorities. Christians in Burma have been persecuted for far longer than the Rohingya Muslims were persecuted. They've suffered ethnic cleansing, just like the Rohingya Muslims have, have suffered, but the British media haven't gone on about it. Christians in, um, South, in, in Nigeria have been killed in their thousands by Islamists. The media aren't talking about it. And I've mentioned Canada and I've mentioned France. So what can we do about this double standard? Well, the first thing we can do is we can start talking about it. The second thing that we can do is whenever we meet one of these liberal types with their progressive crap, you, you basically have just got to challenge them on their hypocrisy and to challenge them forcefully on their hypocrisy. And when they want you to talk about their agenda, rather than buy into that and talking about their agenda, you force them to hear your agenda. And that is how you start to change this situation. Okay, so I'm going to let Jasm jump in now, because yeah. and also, yeah. Jasm, congratulations. That was the longest you went without jumping in. <laughs> Kola yeah. Well, then, yeah, yeah, you know why? Because there was no misquoting of the Quran or Hadith. That's why I kept quiet, because this is the only There time. was no misquoting either, earlier. Anyway, but I'm old enough to remember that before the dust of uh, Twin Towers settled, uh, there were some suited people uh, who speak good English, they are Americans or English people or whatever, educated, who came to the television and started preaching the Western audience about the war between the, the clash of civilization and the, 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 the risks, the danger of Wahhabism. That was like within three hours, I remember. Three, if I have the technology, I can go and, and, and retrieve all these things and show you. So, unfortunately, since then, what I heard today, I'm not, you know, you won't find me normally, you know, I think Joseph know me now for two years, he never heard my voice, <laughs> it was like this. What I, what I experienced today was just horrific, because not impersonal to the, to the gentleman who, who is uh, supporting his own views about Christianity and the danger of Islam, but what I heard was horrific, it gives me no hope 
on the future because as long as there are people who are not sincere about stopping terrorism because this is what we are facing we are facing a wave of terrorism it is it is the sixth generation of, of warfare this is you know like talking about 3g 5g 4 this is the sixth generation of warfare and this is what we will have in the in, in the in the coming decades they won't they won't be we won't go back to the tanks and and airplanes this is the world this is the world will be fought between nations in the coming in the coming decades and until there are people who are not aware that this has to be stopped before it gets to every house every street every country every breeding human being and as long as there are people who are not aware about this we will carry on like this because the problem between extremists my extremists the ones who who i consider my brothers because they are still my brothers even if they are extremists i'm not gonna i'm not gonna de- i'm not gonna deny them islam like they deny it to me like they will call me more dead because i have picture carrying the flag of israel but i won't call them more dead. for me they are muslim because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows you understand it's allah is allah who knows who is a muslim who is not that's what the Quran says i can't i can't i can't recognize my my extremists i can't recognize my chicken you know when i look at the crowd i know who are my extremists and i know how to confront them and the least that they can do to me is just to 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 to, to cut my throat that's that's the maximum they can do to me but even cutting my throat they're not gonna they're not gonna change the truth they're not gonna silence this this dawah you know this dawah going the, the real dawah not the one you, you see in the park you know the dawah that is ever have been going for the last 1400 years they're not gonna stop it by by cutting my throat or cutting the the, the or, or stabbing someone else who is not muslim and who is preaching against islam so this is this is the problem the my problem is that with the other side who are suited uh nice looking people they speak good english and they are in their country they have their they know what they are talking about they know the laws they know the behaviors they know they know history better than us because most of us we are foreigners that's face it. we came from somewhere else i keep saying it i'm not I'm not I'm not shy to say it you know so this is not partially this is not our culture this is something we are learning and we are, we are we are adopting we are accepting what time to integrate with so these people who know all these things and start making this 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 articulated speeches and giving you evidence from history and from from the reason and from from theology and from philosophy and they are they know how to talk about politics and they know the same when the brother was talking, I was listening because I, I think I learned a lot from what he said, even if I disagree with, with, most, with, with what he was going to. But the, the, the elements he was putting in his talk were, were amazing. This, for me, this is science. I was, I, was take, I was taking knowledge. The problem is like, just like Muslims take one verse from the Quran and don't take the other to kill someone, because the brother, the, the Muslims who went to, to, to stop this, this lady, they, if they read uh, chapter number four, verse one four zero, it tells them explicitly to not to stand when people when they are when they are mocking the Quran. Chapter four, verse one four zero. You need to go away. So just by being in speaker corner, you are commi- you, 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 you are committing an offense against your, your own your own laws, the, the laws that you want to to implement, the laws that you want to impose to people. You are you you are the first one not respecting it. So, so I don't want to stay here to pitch. Because honestly, I'm, I'm, I, I, what I like about the Jews is that they don't, they don't take no new applicants. You know, I'm, I'm dreaming of the day we will come to that point. You know, we stop taking new applicants and we show the door to anyone who wants to leave. You know, door open. You want to become ex-Muslim? I help you to become ex-Muslim. You want to become Muslim? I don't know how do you become Muslim. Go, go and ask Allah to tell you how to become Muslim. I'm not going to teach you. Everything is there in the books, in the internet. And stuff. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to give you that. I'm not going to invite you to Islam. We need to get to this point. If you read my blog this morning, what I said, I said, uh, did, we, did we get to the time that we need to close our mosques? The brother who is telling me that we are taking churches, what I just read this morning, you can go and check it. It's not like I make it up. I, I, I post it like at nine o'clock in the morning. After I went through the French situation, you know, and all this building up to, to the elections and uh, shutting mosques and de- deporting imams. At, at what I did uh, right, I said, we need to be creative now because this is not going to change. There will be no day that people, they will pick up and they will say Islam is beautiful, Islam is nice religion. And there will be no day that all Muslims will wake up and they will, they will be following the right path and the wisdom. Don't even look for it. It's not going to happen because we are two billion and, we, and there, are lo- there are a lot of implications that, that lead us to this, to this situation. There will be no day that we will get to all Muslim extremists. Just forget it. It's like COVID. You have to live with it. You know, 
You need to learn how to live with it. So that's why I say, is it time to start closing our mosques? Because, because they want to start deporting imam. They want to, 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 to impose their own views of Islam. They want this, they want that. Okay, close the mosques and pray at home. Because Allah will forgive you. You don't, you don't have to have a mosque. This is the beauty of our religion. I don't have to have a mosque. So close the mosque. And within 10, 10 15 years, the French government, they will, they will come to you begging for you to open the mosque because they cannot deal with the kids in the streets. Because you can't talk to them. If, if, you, if, if, if you raise your voice on your child, social services, they will, they will take them away or they will put them in jail. There, there are no imams to talk to them. There are, there are no, no Islamic schools. They don't study Arabic. How are you going to deal with them? We already tried this, this, this formula in France over the last 30 years. It didn't work. You didn't change Ali and Omar and Abdullah to Jack and John and, uh, and Jacob. You don't, you don't change people's mind. People's, look at what happened to the Jewish people. They've been reduced to the half of their population within, within, within a decade. Did they manage to remove Judaism from their heart? What it did to them? They just made Judaism better because of persecution. Well, this is what persecution did, does to Muslims. This is what you have people like, you see, I'm no one. I'm just like last comer. You know why I'm here? Just by coincidence. It's just because I picked up a Jewish couple in my, in my cab and they were scared of me because I looked like this. That's why, I, that's why I'm here. I never been in social media before. I, I, I opened my Twitter account in September 2000, 2018. Because this, this Jewish couple, they were scared of me because of my beard. So I want to study to understand why they are scared of me. Alhamdulillah, now I have more than 1,000. Yeah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, now I found more than 1,900 followers. Most of them are Jews. Most of them are Yahud. They are my brothers, my sisters. I will die for them. I will give my life for them. I'm not even lying. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, so, so what I'm saying, I, 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 will go, I will go to sleep sad tonight. Trust me. What I heard is heartbreaking, and this is not the way. If and I think anyone, what... if, if, once, just I'll finish quickly. If anyone wants to preach, their, if anyone wants to criticize Islam, bring it on. Bring your evidence. Bring your books. If you are, if you are not able to write a two thousand word article, don't write a tweet. If you are, if you, if you are an intelligent man, if you can't, if you can't convert your tweet against Islam into two thousand words with with the references. Don't tweet it. Keep it for yourself, because you're not going to achieve nothing with hatred. That's all I have to say. And I'm so sorry that I raised my voice. I shouldn't have to. And I apologize. I was excited, you know, because because I know I know the the sitting of this kind of talks. You know, someone come and throw a verse at you, and you have to throw another verse. So this is exactly to become like a ping pong. You know, he tell me, oh, this had it say this, it had it say that. So I'm not going to do this again. I just came because I love Joseph. So I, I love you too, Yassim. And it's one of the things I would say is people like Bob, Steve, myself, we're used to being in the trenches. They were, were, when we engage in religion and speaker's corner, it's usually not a pleasant conversation. And so you've got two people of a very different worldview. Yassim, you're looking to, to build bridges, to work on your the issues within your own community, whereas Bob, Steve, my, myself, we're much more out there Um often clashing with people that want to do serious harm to us as we saw on Sunday. And so I think one thing you can't, you, you mustn't lose sight of is all of this conversation has taken place in the wake of a terror attack against somebody that we know, uh, almost certainly carried out um, for religious reasons. And for that reason, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play two videos, one screenshot. Steve, you're welcome to jump off. Sabida, who's a speaker's corner regular, is in the, 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 the lobby waiting to be let in. So I'm going to quickly play two videos. Then we'll wrap it. We'll I wrap can up go this. and let anyone who is, wants to come in. I can watch from the lobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got enough space for everybody. We, we okay. can host many, many people. No, but I is think it I'm anybody... done. Thank you so much. I will just follow you. And I will carry on with my writing because I have an assignment to be handed over within weeks. Okay. Okay. So, so much. That's, that's and, uh, brother, good. please forgive me. I didn't mean to offend you. And there's nothing personal. It's just like I love my prophet so much that I cannot listen to falsely and keep quiet. Thank you so much. I'm not. I'm, I'm not in any way offended, Yasim. And 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 you've got to understand my motives, mate. I am. My 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 case is built on the evidence if the if the texts weren't there to to be used the islamists wouldn't be using them and neither would i the fact that they are there is the problem um and the the reality is that 
in my head, there's a very clear distinction between Islam, the ideology as found in its texts, and Muslims. And I take Muslims as I find them, which means that I know good Muslims and I know Muslims who uh, are neither here nor there. And I know Muslims who are dickheads. And it's kind of like, you know, I, I take them as I find them like I take you as I find you, you know, but but the, the texts of Islam and Islamic history speak for itself. And Christians have been on the blade end of that for 40 years. We didn't ask you to become Muslim, did we? So, but I, I am inviting you to become Christian. No, I'm I won't. Inviting, Thank you because I'm, I'm more inviting, Christian than you. And I'm inviting any other, any I am other. I'm more Christian than you. And I am inviting. What is it? What is it in Christianity inviting, that I don't have in Islam? And I'm inviting. You know, I'll, I'll well, give you, you some. Hey guys, guys, and before we start inviting each other to each other's religions, I'm going to jump in and play.